next is materialized view what is materialized view so like in SQL we have views available ok so in snaps we have a materialized views available ok in uh, SQL like we have view that is a virtual table and whenever we are going to query it will show you result same concept we have but in the form of materialized view so materialized will view will give you a feature on top of your existing view as well materialized view is basically pre-compute service so here like whenever you are going to execute query on your, on your views at that time it is uh, not going to take that uh, much time ok it is already pre-compute in the backend whenever you are creating ok maybe you have uh, made the changes in table that will be replicated on the same time in your views it is a pre-computed it is not going to compute at the it is not going to execute only at the same time when you are triggering ok it maintain a data like a table but it is also like a virtual table materialized views are automatically updated ok maybe if you have made any changes in your table then it is going to make the same changes in your data as well, in your views as well and it is sync with your table like again if any changes come in your table that will be applied on your views as well ok it will work on the catching functionality where it is going to catch the data and it will allow your snaps analytics to query optimize that ok and apply the indexing in everything you can do it supports like different aggregation function as well like average, maximum, minimum, count ok some where care ok so these things it supports in the materialized views as well so what are the benefits of using materialized views here the benefits is like uh, you, you it will be automatic it will take less time ok and here you can do data refresh whenever any changes in your uh, table the same changes will be applied on your views as well ok and it is highly available and it will be in the sync with your regular table so these are the benefits of using materialized views apart from that here we have talked about couple of things ok so how we can create a dedicated tool table what are the best practices like you can apply indexing cluster index non cluster index you can apply this distribution as distribution round robin or replicate ok or you can apply identity key column you can apply partitioning you can create a materialized use so these are some best practices and here you can see like you can manage you can see the performance also after and before ok after applying the distribution the performance and what are the different use cases ok to go with the distribution these are the options you have that you can follow and apart from that we have seen today uh, like how we can go with uh, this uh, uh, what's a um, spark pool table and your uh, serverless pool table ok and dedicated pool table so these are the things we have covered now we are going to see ok here we are able to access your database ok so we are able to access our database under this data data tab ok and then inside this one we can see the storage okay, what are the different storage you have in the double we have seen you can create SQL script notebook ok everything you can create in the integrate these things we have not discussed here we are going to create some pipeline and we are going to explore that how you can create pipeline in your snaps too ok that we are going to see in data factory we have analyzed ok how you can create the pipeline same thing we are going to see in the snaps too then this is your monitor tab where you can monitor your spark pool what is the status ok and the size and everything so you can see one is in the pause mode and another is in the online mode that is your serverless same your spark pool so here also you can see this is the size ok and allocated in memory and everything you can see how many SQL requests are coming up so inside this one these are the SQL requests, SQL queries we have added to ok so these are the SQL queries if I expand this ok so these are the different SQL queries we have seen total record from OV and everything so these are the different queries we have same KQLQ request also if you receive that also you can monitor it and same on the purchase per application side on the notebook ok so if you have created a notebook ok so this notebook we have created so here you can see the status also how much time it will take what is the input data what is the output data everything you can see ok 
so here right now our uh, uh, job is in uh, like spark pool is in stop mode so here the tray it is throwing an error now here you can monitor your pipelines and under the monitor tab so as of now you are not running any pipeline so that's why it's not showing the trigger and here also you have same triggering option available schedule tumbling window storage even and custom so that you can follow and then you have integration runtime same by default when auto resolve integration runtime is there but you can set up self hosted and as you require to and link connection this is your snaps link okay so snaps link we use for connecting with your uh, cosmos db if you have new no sql database that you want to store okay so for the no sql database you can go with the cosmos db okay for sql data for relational data okay for for structured data we have sql database available we have synapse available okay so add in the sql also we have different options available but if i have a semi structured data or if i have a non relational data so in that case i can go with the cosmos db cosmos db is a type of database that we use for handling non relational or semi structured data okay so for that um we you can with the help of synapse link you can integrate your synapse with cosmos db2 so earlier in the previous version of this data engineering db200 and 201 you need to pass two exam to be become a certified on the data engineer see microsoft for becoming microsoft certified data engineer you need to pass two exam that is uh, db200 and db201 and now from last year may they have configure only one that is db203 and in that like cosmos db they have removed but they have added the synapse link in a just overview perspective where you should know okay how this cosmos db will work okay and uh, the overview of this one that you can analyze so here this is a also one synapse link that we will see and this is your manage tab so inside this manage tab okay if you see i want to manage a sql pool if you want to create a sql pool you can create it from here i want to manage a spark pool that i can manage it over here okay i can create it and everything and data explorer is a individual service on azure that will use for running your kubeso query okay if you have some kubeso query that you want to run so for that you are going to use data explorer so inside this data explorer you can execute you can write down your query okay as per the real time okay so for that this is in the preview mode currently where uh, the, you can attach your data explorer also and you can connect execute the query of data explorer okay so here this one you can use for running near real time data for large volume of data same here you can create a link service in microsoft purview microsoft purview is basically connecting your azure synapse to microsoft purview you can enable okay that is also the dedicated service you need to create a purview account and then you can integrate them. okay then these are the triggering option available the same which we have discussed so here you have the same uh, different, uh, different type of triggering four type of triggering we have this is we have discussed already in the data factory so i'm not going in the detail and the next is your integration on time so in this integration on time here we have different type of uh, integration on time that we have discussed okay you can set up a self hosted ia you can set up a, a, like a auto resolved uh, sorry azure ia you can set up as ia but if someone will ask okay what is the difference between the snaps and data factory so here you can see in the snaps you have only azure hosted and self hosted and azure sbi but in data factory you have linked to self hosted also but on snaps you don't have linked to self hosted ia okay on data factory you have linked to self hosted but on snaps you don't have that is one different apart from that here you have some pre built templates available in data factory for creating the pipeline but on snaps you don't have these are some different apart from that here this is your access control you can manage the access okay at a user level or at a group level or you can create a service principal and you can manage the access of for your uh, studio for your snaps from here 
So if I click on this add, you can see that I can select a role. Okay, that is Synapse Admin, okay, or a Synapse Contributor, or Synapse Publisher. So if I'm granting you Synapse Admin level of access, okay. So you have complete access on my Synapse. If I'm granting you Contributor level of access, so in that case, you have a Contributor level of access. But if I'm choosing Synapse SQL Admin, so in that case, you have only SQL level of access. It means like till dedicated pool you have access. And then after that you have a Spark administrator. It means now you are not going to access other pool. Instead of that you are going to access only Spark. Okay, you can only simply execute your notebook. You cannot perform any options. You cannot access your data, SQL uh, data, okay, dedicated pool data. You can only access your Spark data. Same, you can manage the IT effect also. You can manage the compute operator also. Okay, these are the things you can manage. Okay, you want to manage the link data or credential user, everything you can manage. So you have a flexibility over here to choose, okay, what level of access you want to grant. Okay, maybe at a Spark level, maybe at a SQL level only, or maybe at a Studio level, or maybe complete access. So you can restrict the access and you can manage that. So here you can see this is one service principle, and this is one user. Okay, so we, by default these two things are added already. So this is the credential. So here basically credentially if you are creating some keys or identity, okay, so in that case you can create the credential to pass it in your Active Directory or maybe in the link. So for that you can manage the credentials over here. If you have some workspace packages are available, okay, some custom role, specific packages, specific version, okay, specific module library you have that you want to import, so or upload. So you can simply come up over here and you can upload. Okay, you can upload your uh, uh, packages, modules, okay, inside this one and later on when you are going to use your notebook, you can refer the these packages and you can utilize this. So if you have some existing module packages available, then you can upload. Option, if you remember, like in the database also, you have like uh, while creating a cluster, you have option for the advanced setting. At that time also you can provide these details, okay, like if you have some initializing script, you have some modules, okay, that you can pass. So in Synapse also you can pass this from here, okay, and then data flow library, okay, currently this is also in the previous day. So data flow library basically, if you have some custom function which you want to use, okay, in the data flow. Data flow we are going to talk about in detail what it is and how we can use that. So if you have some data flow custom uh, function that you want to use it, then you can go with the data flow library and you can utilize it. And here basically it will be helpful, okay, when you are combining your function. And same if you want to set up your Spark configuration, you can go ahead and you can set up your Spark configuration too. Here you can set up your source code and everything and then later on you can use. Want to configure your Git, you can configure your Git repository, pass on the URL can do the authentication, set up your repository, you can specify okay, that this is my git, and here my git provider is basically GitHub or maybe uh, Azure DevOps, okay, and then you can apply, okay. So here you can see what is your repository type. It will be on the Azure DevOps or in the Git. Okay, so as this um, Synapse is in service from Microsoft side, so here you will see majorly Microsoft supported project is coming, of uh, services is it, it follow. Okay, you can set up your repository in Bitbucket also, but you cannot connect with Bitbucket because Bitbucket is not owned by Microsoft. As you develop Git is owned by Microsoft and GitHub is a service which is a highly prop popular in the market. So that's why it will go with it. So like I am sending it with the GitHub, you just simply pass the repository owner, and okay, you, you need to provide the details and then configure Okay, that you can do. And here you can set up the DevOps also. Here, like you can configure the GitHub whenever any code change is coming up. Okay, like you have made modify in the notebook, maybe you have modified the dev, uh, pipeline. So this code changes whenever you are going to modify anything. You are going to publish that. So the code is going to be stored on your uh, GitHub. Okay, and then from the GitHub, your CI/CD pipeline will pick up the code. That and deploy that 
Maybe on the high environment or maybe in the same environment. So, in the project, okay, so it's not like manually we are going to do manage everything at our own. Instead of that, we will do the automation with the help of CIT. Okay. These are the options we have discussed. So, if you want to create with another data lake, okay, in this one. So, you can simply click on this one and you can create external, uh, connect to external data and you can choose, okay, that I want to connect with Cosmos DB or maybe I want to connect to Data Explorer. So, in the Data Explorer, as I mentioned, Kushta Qt is going to write down. Okay, in the Cosmos DB, it is a non-relational database that will connect with, through the API. Like, you can connect with the SQL with the API, you can connect with the Azure tables with the API, you can connect with the MongoDB, okay, through the API. So, these are the services which is available on Azure, so you want to integrate with any of them, you want to integrate with Blob Studio, Data Lake, Data Explorer, so you can choose the option, okay, and then you need to create first a link service, okay, here, like, if I'm choosing this one, it is going to ask you for the link service, and then after the creating the link service, it is going to integrate that, okay, and later on you are going to utilize this, okay, uh, like, maybe your data is available in Data Explorer, your data is available in Cosmos DB, so after in uh, integration, you are going to utilize the service okay, where you are going to consume. So I guess then we are good for the day.